carry on and plan the sequel. Because let's face it, baby, these days, you gotta have a sequel. Yeah! And welcome back to Micro Queers. It's your bi weekly queer horror short roundup. And I'm Joe. And I'm Trace, and this week we are talking Farbod Kostanat's uh, Two Little Boys, which, um, it, it's, heavy. it's heavy. It's just a touch heavy, yes. So folks, if you haven't watched the 13-minute short, it is about Josh, played by Trace Talbot, and he has a love for a closeted bully named Tyler, who is played by Aza German, and that drives him into an unconventional road to confession and its consequences, and... I mean, I love the log lines for shorts because they always bury the lead because that might I, make you think eh, it's not that bad. I mean, reading the comments like on the YouTube clip for this, I mean, hey, this is an unconventional short because I, I, it, it, I knew it was going somewhere not good. Like I knew mm-hmm. that's what was happening here, but yes. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen. Right. Um, or at least like the reveals that we got. Like again, like I mean, again, uh, the the reveal at the end with that home video footage is just. Such. it's so crushing right it's, it's a gut punch and yeah. honestly it, it, like re- obviously it recontextualizes the entire piece mm-hmm. but it it in a way that i think it's so it's way more impactful than if it was just oh he's just a just a homophobic or closeted like queer bully you know mm-hmm. yeah so um as i suggest that logline really buries the lead yes. but i like that this film opens with that home video footage so you see uh you know, video cam footage yep. from 1994. It's of these two little boys playing on swings. And then we cut immediately to <laughs> every queer boy's favorite space, the high the school locker gym room. <laughs> locker room. <laughs> and yeah, Josh is bullied by these two boys. But I think one of the things that I appreciated as the short goes on is that neither of them is good or bad. Like it's not a straightforward case of bullying yeah. because it becomes quickly evident that Josh is actually... He has made false rape accusations against Tyler, but Tyler is obviously bullying him like really badly. And I love the kind of slow reveal where where we see Josh initially in profile and then he Mm -hmm. turns and you see that he has a black eye and it's like, oh, okay, right off the bat, we know what we're dealing with. Well, what you would expect from something like this again. So, you know, it's revealed eventually that yes, okay, so they have feelings for each other and maybe Mm -hmm. have done physical things before outside of you know the kiss we see in the home video footage from when they were like five years old right um i also love that it's a period piece because Mm -hmm. this is 06 so i would have actually been their age um during Mm -hmm. this time frame um but again with this you always expect that it's gonna be okay cool like you know closeted like queer man or queer boy is bullying other queer people because he is uh, has internalized homophobia right. and that is what we're that dealing true. with here yep but my my favorite thing is that you know he's so mad about his mom coming and you're like well what's like what's what's, what's the big page? deal with mom he, he's pissed off about it whatever like yeah he doesn't want to go to the principal's office and then you learn that yeah like she is she is the one who was so anti-gay and mm. this is something that i don't know if we've talked about on this podcast before but you know, it, we've seen it in like season two of Love Victor, where we see the mom uh, yeah. not handle the coming out process very well because so mm-hmm. often in media it's always the dad because again there's that machismo factor. So yep. I love <laughs> seeing this side of it because that was actually my <laughs> experience. I mean, not to this extent, but like no. I grew up in a household where my mom took it way worse than my dad did. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and folks, when Trey said that he loves it, for those of you who are not watching the video on YouTube, he did make air quotes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's hard to say that I love anything about this short in particular. It's it's very emotional. Like it, Mm -hmm. I feel like we're using the word visceral a lot on the podcast lately. Um, It's just something that you really feel. Like everything about this short feels physical it's uh actual physical violence but also just like the pit like the ball in the pit of your stomach as you're waiting for something bad to happen and this escalating sense of dread and I actually do think that the the mise-en-scene helps to capture that like the lighting is kind of grossly green and sickly so it it cues you to feel eh, right from the beginning and when we go back to the home video, it's like bright, sunshiny day on a playground. And mm-hmm. so we juxtapose with that. 
Um, yeah, I, I gasped out loud um, twice watching this short. And it, oh. it was when the cellophane came out, which I was literally like, oh, fuck. Because then I was like, oh, I know right. what's going to happen now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was when... Um, yeah, it was when Tyler fell when he was trying to push down the door. Uh, yeah, I, I gasped and I almost jumped out of my seat. Like, I mean, it was. It, yeah, because the I mean, again, we're sort of pushing the genre boundaries here. Like, I think a lot of people might look at this and classify it as a straightforward drama. As a queer person, I easily identify this as a kind of horror film. But yeah. the the physicality, the physicality of it is such that yeah like they actually had a professional stunt coordinator on the shoot like this is a two-day shoot but they had somebody in there to make sure that these hits which feel so impactful Mm -hmm. didn't go awry and that is the best one because uh the sound effects mixed with the physicality is like bam you feel it it. you're really lobbying i don't want to say even lobbying back and forth between who you're rooting for here and again i'm putting mm-hmm. rooting for in air quotes right but like <laughs> i mean again like you don't want either one of them to die but again no. like the, the film starts and you know, you're like oh bully bad like let's right. just, like, take take this guy down a peg yeah and there's such subtle nuances in uh in Austin german's performance as the as the short goes on mm-hmm. where even when he's still being that bully, you can see the pain and yes. the pleading behind his eyes. Yeah. Which you think it's just because don't out me. Like, I don't want right. to be outed. And then as it goes on, it's like, oh no, like he's mm-hmm. terrified of his mother. Well, yeah. Well, and <clears throat> it is tough, right? Because initially I just thought, no, this is a person who's bad because he's mm-hmm. bullying a, a very obviously queer person. And then it becomes, oh, is he hiding a secret? Because when the letter starts to get read, because uh, Josh is clutching this letter throughout the entire short. And when he reads it, I actually thought it was going to be from Tyler to him, revealing the fact that they had been having some kind of affair or that they had feelings for one Mm -hmm. another. And then you realize it's just a love letter. Like it's a it's a really sad love letter from somebody who has been obsessed with this person. And I, I, again and again, the short likes to kind of recontextualize what's happening. So you realize, okay, there was something there once upon a time. It's only Josh who feels it now. But you're you're right. I do think there's something in particularly as a German's performance that you can see that pain. And even if he doesn't have those kinds of feelings for Josh anymore, he he doesn't want to hurt him but he also can't stop himself because if hurting him means that he won't be outed either to his friend who's in the bathroom with him or his mom then it's what he feels like he has to do like this is what sexual repression looks like yeah it results in violence i mean well, and, and that's what i again love in quotes about this. <laughs> stop using air quotes it, it's it's not just his fault i mean you know yeah. there's nuance here right it's not black and white like yes mm-hmm. the things he is doing are very They're wrong are yeah. very bad did, did you have you um you person did you ever have a, a bully uh for like making fun of you for being gay I, mean, I know you weren't out back then but like or but basically one that did come out later Hmm. So this is such dangerous ground right because i i actually feel like i've seen a lot of discourse online about how it's important not to try to frame every person who bullies as a closeted queer because oh yeah but that, I'm asking... that i think removes the responsibility for them i personally don't think i've had that but i mm-hmm. I, I mean, I was definitely bullied and all that good stuff. Yay. I, yeah, I mean, I, I never had, um, like, I never had a specific bully, but I definitely, I've had people apologize to me later that were not queer um, for right. treating me like shit in high school. Okay. But I've seen people that stood by on the sidelines right. as I was being bullied that did come out later. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, bystander effect there, you know, it's like, well, fuck you. Like, <laughs> but yeah. I obviously know why they weren't speaking up. But even with our two protagonists here, I mean, uh, Josh isn't really, I mean, again, I'm not going to say he's not innocent because obviously mm-hmm. he doesn't deserve the abuse coming his no. way, but he does kind of do something that isn't great. Yeah. And I'll confess. So I've seen, I'm most of these shorts I watch twice because I check to see whether or not they're a good fit for the show. And then I watch them again before we record. And I right. had kind of skimmed through this one. So I actually miss the rape app accusation i just saw that he had done something that instigated uh, a very violent response in tyler 
And so watching it this time around, my heart just kind of sank because it's like, oh, well, we've got a queer person who's being, being bullied, but I fucking hate media that depicts false accusations of rape because, as, you know, in, in the real world, we have huge issues with people not being able to come forward about sexual assault because they aren't believed. And every time we find out that there's like a Journey Smollett, um, it, it really just fucking Wait, undermined. J- Jesse, sorry, not Journey. Jesse, ah, I always do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jesse Smollett and his, you know, fictitious yeah. story, like it really hurts other people. And it also, I think, suggests to people that not only should we not believe people who come forward, but also if you were in that position, you will not be believed because of liars like that. So I, I, I totally get it. Um, this <laughs> is definitely a case for me where it's like, well, is it the character or is it the film? Because it does say it's based on a true story and I do not know the details of this true story. So I don't know. So I know it. it it's basically okay. just that uh, the opening situation on the playground happened to the director okay. and it was his parents who were like, you will never see this person again. And he he was in love with a childhood friend and then never saw never that saw person again. again. I guess, but I, I, I'm doing mental gymnastics here where I'm just kind of mm-hmm. like, but it's also like a 15 or 16 year old boy right. who is desperate and alone. And sure. I'm not I'm not saying what he's doing is right. And I, no. so I get it. I, it's not right. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is not right. And I get it. But I'm mm-hmm. also just kind of like, so when we were talking about though the media that does that, right? Yeah. So when writing this, like th- this didn't have to be a, plot point right it didn't have right. to be rape so then it's kind of like well why why is right. this that and I, I, I it's easier for me to swallow but i do like i i you understand I'm, I'm ignoring the weight behind the decision to include that yeah to me it suggests that it like it's such an extreme yeah. accusation right so in my mind it gives us insight into what josh is going through that he feels like this is the only thing that I can say that's actually going to make something better or catch this boy's attention. I I don't like it, but yeah. I can see how it gets used and how it might, it, it reframes the character. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it really does. But again, I'm just like, eh, it's a teenage boy. Like, right, yeah. What, like, yeah. Um, but I'm interested to see what our listeners think of this because, Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, we probably should have offered some content warnings off the get go, but (laughs) right. We'll, we'll make sure to do that. (laughs) Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. (laughs) Let's just record something beforehand. I mean, nevertheless, I really liked this short. I, I don't Mm -hmm. know if I could watch a full length version of it. Now that doesn't mean I don't want it to exist because I do think that there is a powerful story here. And again, specifically, I mean, I tweeted something uh, this week or last week where I was like, you know, parents, of anyone like right check yourself when you're watching any piece of media with a queer character in it because i can promise you if you have a closeted queer child they are watching you using Mm -hmm. your reactions as a litmus test for how you'll react when they win slash if they decide to come out yeah and this that that's why i liked this short so much is because it does show the impact i mean granted this is an extreme you know this is a woman that is abusing her son as a child for kissing a boy or for Mm -hmm. trying to kiss a boy yeah, and, and potentially so, results in one minimum one, potentially two uh, very yeah significant yes. outcomes. Exactly, and so I I do think there's a there's a film to be made here. Mm-hmm. I just like before walking into a said film, I would have to like really yeah. mentally like prepare myself for yeah. the, the the horrible things I were, I'm about to see. Yeah, have you seen in the bedroom? No. It's uh, Sissy Spacek oh, okay. and Tom Wilkinson and Marissa Tomei. No, but that's like 2001. I definitely watched the Oscars that year. <laughs> okay. It, it has that kind of feel to me where it's a bit of a domestic drama, but the stakes are such that it's life and death, but with regular folks. And I could see a feature length version kind of playing along those lines where it, it is more properly dramatic. You could probably attract some pretty big A-list stars. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think American Beauty might be another comparison where it's like yeah. the, the dark underbelly of suburbia. Suburbia. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, okay. I mean, I guess so. I mean, I, again, I kind of give a half answer, but would you watch a feature length version of this? Uh, I like I like the way that Farbad Kashtanet shoots this. And I 
would really like to see what he would do with a longer medium. This is a bit of an exercise in tension. And at 13 minutes, it feels kind of expertly paced. Yeah. So I would be a little trepidatious about a feature length film, but I think the visual eye is definitely there. Uh, I do agree with you. I guess, so th is this, so this is a scene in the movie, you know, mm -hmm. or is it, are we stretching this scene to feature? Well, no, that wouldn't work. But like, is this scene, I guess, at the end of the movie or maybe it's in the middle of the movie and like the second half is, um, mm -hmm. is, I think is the watching how, is, well, I mean, like Josh is dead, but we're watching how Tyler, I guess, adjusts or yes. what he does after that, you know, like I, I'm mm -hmm. interested in that. But. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, uh, there's a lot to play with there. Mm -hmm. Well, listeners, let us know what you thought of uh, <laughs> of Two Little Boys. Um, again, um, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yep. <laughs> I, uh, I like that we're finding some kind of mix where every once in a while we have a heavy one, but we also have playful ones as well. So thank yeah. God. <laughs> Well, um, all right. So yeah, again, if you're listening to this, please, if you want, go over to YouTube and watch us so you can see me do my air quotes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but uh, until our next episode or mini-sode of Micro Queers, we can cross out two little boys. Ooh. Yes, and cross out Micro Queers. I'm going to keep hitting the microphone because, you know, <laughs> Amateurville!